Hello, welcome to this lesson in Engineering Mechanics and Statics. We're going to continue working with vectors in three dimensions. I have this uh, problem on the board. It's going to help us uh, understand quite a bit about how to calculate these uh, direction angles and also unit vectors and things like that. We have a force vector, that's the black vector, it's 600 pounds. It's pointed in a certain direction. Notice that we don't have any angles listed on this diagram anywhere, but what we do have, something a little bit odd, we have uh, the components sort of but listed as distances here and that's a little bit odd when you think about it for a minute because the vector is actually representing um, 600 pounds of force we're not given the X Y and Z components of the force we don't know that but what we have done is kind of draw the three-dimensional representation of this vector and if it were a length vector then we would say that the X component which would be this component would be six feet this component would be 10 feet and the height of the guy would be 8 feet. So if this vector just represented a direction, like a direction, uh, a segment vector of a direction, then we would know the X, Y, and Z components of, of the length of that vector, where it's pointed. Um, but in fact, the vector is actually representing a force. So what we're being asked, first of all, to do, we're going to have part A, part B, and part C. The first thing is, given what we have in the drawing, how do we find the direction angles, theta x, theta y, and theta z, all right? Um, and what you, what you need to kind of re, re, remember is that we defined theta x, theta y, theta z in terms of the cosine of theta x, the cosine of theta y, and the cosine of theta z. And if you remember, we talked about that. We said, for instance, for theta x, that we could say cosine of theta x was going to equal, in general, when we had the general drawing up there, we said it was going to be the x component of the vector divided by the magnitude a. Uh, but here it's a little bit confusing because the actual vector is a force, but yet we're given these distances. So here's the deal. When you're given distances like that in a drawing, they really can serve two purposes. One, they're there to show you how large the apparatus is or whatever it is you're studying. But if they're drawn in, in reference to a vector, they're there pretty much to tell you where that director, where that vector is pointing. The only reason I would ever put distances and, and attach them to a vector like that is to tell you where that vector is pointing. So we know that if I walk 10 steps in the x direction um, and then we walk Actually, it's six steps, because if you look at this distance is over here. If we walk six steps in the x direction, 10 steps in the y direction, and eight steps in the z direction, and then we that gives us the tip of our vector, we compare that to the origin, that's specifying the direction of our force vector. So really,